Hey there everyone, welcome back and happy spring to those of you in the Northern Hemisphere experiencing that beauty right now. We're here doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles and today we are doing lesson number 79. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. And today is day 18 of my 21 day water fast. It's just moving right along, just a few more days left. Hopefully this is confronting some of the beliefs that you may have had about the human body and how long it can go without food. I know it's confronting some of my beliefs <laughs> that I had. Anyway, well, I mean, I had been reading a lot about fasting before I actually did this, but still having the experience is like super confronting and interesting and definitely um, illuminating. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into today's lesson. I had a pretty interesting meditation this morning that I'll share with you as well. So let's get to it. Lesson 79, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. A problem cannot be solved if you do not know what it is. Even if it is really solved already, you will still have the problem because you will not recognize that it has been solved. This is the situation of the world. The problem of separation, which is really the only problem, hasn't already been solved. Yet the solution is not recognized because the problem is not recognized. Everyone in this world seems to have his own special problem. Yet they are all the same and must be recognized as one if the one solution that solves them all is to be accepted. Who can see that a problem has been solved if he thinks that the problem is something else? Even if he is given the answer, he cannot see the relevance. This is the position in which you find yourself now. You have the answer, but you are still uncertain about what the problem is. A long series of different problems seems to confront you, and as one is settled, the next one and next arise. There seems to be no end to them. There is no time in which you feel completely free of problems and at peace. The temptation to regard the problems as many is the temptation to keep the problem of separation unsolved. The world seems to present you with a vast number of problems, each requiring a different answer. This perception places you in a position in which your problem solving must be inadequate and failure is inevitable. No one could solve all the problems the world appears to hold. They seem to be on so many levels, in such varying forms and with such varied content, that they confront you with an impossible situation. Dismay and depression are inevitable as you regard them. Some spring up unexpectedly, just as you think you have resolved the previous ones. Others remain unsolved under a cloud of denial and rise to haunt you from time to time, only to be hidden again, but still unsolved. All this complexity is but a desperate attempt not to recognize the problem, and therefore not to let it be resolved. If you could recognize that your only problem is separation, no matter what form it takes, you could accept the answer because you would see its relevance. Perceiving the underlying constancy in all the problems that seem to confront you, you would understand that you have the means to solve them all, and you would use the means because you recognize the problem. In our longer practice periods today, we will ask what the problem is and what the answer is to it. We will not assume that we already know. We will try to free our minds and all the many different kinds of problems we think we have we will try to realize that we have only one problem, which we have failed to recognize. We will ask what it is and wait for the answer. We will be told. Then we will ask for the solution to it, and we will be told. The exercises for today will be successful to the extent to which you do not insist on defining the problem. Perhaps you will not succeed in letting all your preconceived notions go, but that is not necessary. All that is necessary is to entertain some doubt about the reality of your version of what your problems are. You are trying to recognize that you have been given the answer by recognizing the problem, so that the problem and the answer can be brought together 
and you can be at peace. The shorter practice periods for today will not be set by time, but by need. You will see many problems today, each one calling for an answer. Our efforts will be directed toward recognizing that there is only one problem and one answer. In this recognition are all problems resolved. In this recognition, there is peace. Be not deceived by the form of problems today. Whenever difficulty seems to arise, tell yourself quickly, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Then try to suspend all judgment about what the problem is. If possible, close your eyes for a moment and ask what it is. You will be heard and you will be answered. So when I did this meditation today, I had a pretty interesting experience, but let me back up for a second. This morning, I, I never do this. Like since I've been here, I definitely haven't done this, but I grabbed my phone and like turned off the Wi-Fi. So I have a little bit of signal so I started getting some emails in and just opened an email that said my account was debited uh, for this membership that I really don't want to belong to anymore. So I was like, okay, let me go in there and fix it. So I felt myself get a little tiny bit triggered, but then when I deleted it, I was like, all right, I can accept the loss or maybe I can try to get that money back. No big deal. It wasn't that much anyway, but it was just something that was like dragging in the back of my mind somewhere. And I was like, oh, problem solved. So then I pick up the book, the course, and I'm like, oh, look, it's talking about problem solving today. That's really funny. I solved the problem already. And then actually, um, another thing that just came up, I was, I was halfway through making this video at my little uh, cabin where I'm staying, and a woman came across the way, and she's like, can you, can you please stop talking? It's waking me up. And I thought, oh my God, I've been making these videos like every day, and I'm wondering, was she hearing me every day or was today the first day? But anyway, so I was like, oh shit, you know, and then I felt guilty and I felt a little embarrassed. And, and then I was like, oh, but I'm, I'm doing this lesson. It's like, that's not a problem. Okay, you know, if I'm waking you up, uh, I'll find another place to go. So I came over here to this place. This is pretty cool. So anyway, it's just interesting how things are kind of hitting me right now. And it's like, oh, it's, it's not really sticking and it's not like, ah, you know, it's not killing me. So anyway, so the meditation, um, after I read the lesson, I went into meditation and uh, Jesus wanted to work with me, teach me a little lesson this morning, show me some stuff. So we were um, in kind of an open clearing area and there was a pretty fast running creek right there that kind of like bisected the area and then he put himself on one side and I was on the other and we're looking at each other and so then he's basically communicating with me telepathically he's like let's say this is separation I said all right so then he uh lifts up the water and I crawl underneath puts the water back down and I'm sitting next to him I look at him he looks at me and he's like you know like that, that's it like that's it's that simple like separation we were separated now we're not I was like okay I get it so then we turn back to back and the the image of the two of our bodies they turn kind of into rag dolls in a way and then there's that then my 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 consciousness uh, guided by him notices this this silver line this cord that's that's connecting us to the heavens and it goes up and up and up and out of the earth's atmosphere and kind of like channels through this like universe thing and and then it goes up above that so it looks like the normal starry sky and then you go through this universe and then once it gets up to the next level the stars kind of clear out I mean there's still some but it's it's clearly a different level of space um and and then the cord turns into you know how like in your lungs your your bronchial or whatever the arteries are I don't know it just kind of fans out like it goes from one thing and then it's like Phew. so our cords begin to like fan out and then it's like it's hard to tell one from the other and then above that is like another one of these big like <laughs> cavey things that, that comes to my awareness. 
and and it's sort of like a floating island and there's all these little uh turquoisey colored orbs just kind of like you know there and and it's like that's what um i guess that's like a an aspect of home or a part of home like like we're all together, all of our little lights are together, living in this like natural sort of environment or something. I tried to get closer, but they wouldn't let me. So I don't really know the story about that community, but I guess that's like what the image that was shown to me that was home. So it seemed like in the very beginning of the meditation, the piece about separation was solved. It was like, this, this is the issue. Now I need to take you to the truth. And I think the purpose of the meditation was to show me the context of, you know, the, whatever the problem is you think you're experiencing here on the surface is solvable, not that big of a deal because you're connected to this, this thing, this web of, of souls and life and, and vastness that you can't even, you can't even conceive of really down here on the surface of the earth. So I don't know. I think the lesson for me is just, yeah, you're going to encounter problems here and yeah, some of them are going to be really hard and they're going to require you to be super present in your heart and give your full attention and you know, focus and, and, and take things seriously to the degree that you need to work through them and respect other people that are involved and all that kind of stuff. But there's so much more going on beyond what we see and do and think and worry about every day. So that's kind of where this lesson talked to me today. And yeah, like I said, this, I woke this woman up while with my voice, which is crazy because you know, I think my voice is stronger today than it has been. So I'm just wondering if she just didn't hear me on all the other days, but I'm not worried about it. Like, okay, my bad, you know, and, um, the same thing with like the charge coming into my account. Like I, it, it does click on a little bit of like, oh gosh, you know, you're just like vulnerable. Whenever you sign up for something, they just kind of scoop money out of your bank account. But it's like, who cares at the end of the day, you know, it's like, who cares? It, it really, it literally does not matter. It doesn't matter. You know, the, a couple of lessons ago, um, I'm, I'm under no law, but God's man, that gets into it because we do worry about how much money we have and we connect all kinds of aspects of our identity and our feelings of security and safety around money and money isn't even real. You know, and so it's so interesting how like that lesson in particular really draws your attention to all the things that you're subservient to and worried about conforming and complying with when yet as soon as your spirit leaves your body, it's like none of that stuff is real. None of it matters. And then you like float away into this place where you become one with everything and you're, you're just a little light orb somewhere out there. It's like... <laughs> So yeah, hopefully today that can give you some context in terms of whatever you might be struggling with or suffering with. Not dismissing it at all because I understand there are things that require your attention and your ingenuity to, to fix. But I, I think your attitude and approach is, is key with any problems in life, you know try to have in the back of your mind somewhere, especially today, and allow this lesson to float through your consciousness, that the only real problem is our separation from God. So this problem is super minuscule, no matter how big it actually is, compared to that, compared to like your salvation and your returning home. So have a good attitude, you know, oh, this is being presented to me so that I can learn something so that I can, uh, you know, see the heart of God in this person who maybe I'm fighting with, or maybe I'm judging, or, or maybe someone that I love, but I, you know, don't truly see them. Whatever it is, like, you can approach your life situations moment by moment 
with this attitude of curiosity and open-heartedness and with an intention to love more. Not to win, not to be right, not to prove that you knew and they didn't or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, and in all these relationships where we establish hierarchies like parent and child or teacher and student or whatever it is, you're, you're not really that anyway. Whatever your role is in those hierarchies, you're not actually that. We're all here with, with a, our own set of guides and teachers on the you know, metaphysical level. Non-physical beings are guiding us each individually. We're here to learn, right? And so problem solving can be super creative, can be really interesting and fun if you're curious and open-hearted and approach it with this intention to learn a lesson because that's what everything is for, everything. That's why we're here, to evolve, to learn, to grow, to love, and then to go back home. <laughs> so that's, that's that for today. Enjoy your day. Um, I don't really have anything extra to add about the water fast, do I? Well, last night, so I was trying, uh, well, this is kind of interesting. I was trying to drink eight liters of water and I had been for like four days in a row and last night I got to the point where I was just like really you know and I was drinking it slowly so I was staying up late to try to get the water in and I was just feeling nauseous and a little bit lightheaded and I was like god I have two more glasses to drink I'm just not gonna do it so I didn't I decided to drink a little bit less and um I feel a little bit better today not that I think that the water was bad for me, but it was just this idea that I had, I had something in my mind, like I have to get to drinking 16 glasses a day. And if I don't do it as if there's some kind of a consequence. So based on the way I was feeling, I cut it off at um, 14 and I, I put glass number 15 next to my bed and through the night I did drink it. Uh, and then by the end, you know, this morning when I woke up, I finished it, but it's like, I don't want to be forcing myself to do anything, regardless of if I'm trying to have a number um, that I think I'm supposed to be drinking or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. Again, it just, you know, there's rules, I'm supposed to be following them or whatever. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, how do you feel? What's your attitude about it? Are you able to shift and learn something and, and keep moving without having this drag of this like guilty feeling or regret feeling or whatever like can you move forward without being attached and held down by everything in the past even if it was last night i don't know so there you go i i will be drinking water today and hanging out with my friends for a little while and then i'll be by myself in the hammock for several hours experiencing the sounds and the beauty of this place like i'm not taking any second of this for granted not one bit um yeah having a good day i hope you do too i love you all so much thank you for joining me i hope you're really getting in there with the lessons and and working on yourself and seeing where you're causing a lot of stress and difficulty in your mind and in your life and that you're willing to let it go today. Have an awesome day and I'll see you back here again tomorrow.